Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today, guys, we are reading Toby's story, chapter seven. And let's and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment all down below. And I hope you're having a good day, guys, and have a great summer too. And let's get started in chapter seven. After Mana and I had played training, she left for the day. The night, Patsy fed me and petted and petted me goodbye. goodbye. Once she left, I lay still in my bed for a while, but I couldn't go to sleep, so I got up and stretched and wandered to the door of my room. I pushed at it with, if, with one of my paws, and it swung open. Outside, the hallway was dark and quiet. It wasn't like it was the daytime with people waking up and down, some briskly and quietly on their own feet. Some slowly in those tall cages they called walkers. There were no carts rattling by and no people in chairs. In fact, there were nobody in sight. All that running today in the, in the grass outside had made me remember that the ranch and how I used to sleep in a pile with my brothers and sisters cuddled close to my mother's side. I didn't feel like sleeping alone. Why should I? When I had so many friends, I trotted down the halls until I reached a familiar room, Granddad's. The door opened. The door was open to crack. I stuck my nose in the crack so they so that I could sniff up Granddad's smell, but that made the door open wider. So naturally, I went inside. Granddad was lying in his bed with a light on over his head. He had a book propped up on his chest. When the door opened, he glanced over and smiled. Hey there, Toby. Boy, he said, I like to hear my name. And the effect, then the affection in his voice. I knew I was welcome, so I hopped up in the end of his bed, turned in circles a few times, flopped down next to his feet, and sighed with contentment. You, you telling me it's time to turn on turn out the light granddad said he put he put the book on a bedside table and vanished he shifted and settled in the bed and i waited until he was lying still then i wiggled closer to it then i closer then i wiggled closer so that his feet would keep me warm it felt better to sleep like this this than all alone in my bed did that mean I belong to Granddad now. I didn't seem quite right. I like Granddad, and I was happy to be curled up next to his feet, but he wasn't the one who fed me. Mana and, and sometimes Patsy did that, and they both petted me and praised me, and Mana took me outside to the lawn to do training, to do the training game, but then they left. That happens every day. They they left and stayed, and I stayed. Tyler did the same thing. He played with me, and then he left. Granddad didn't leave. He stayed, and there was Eddie, of course. He fed me bacon, and my tail twitched a little at the thought, but it didn't seem like that I belonged to Eddie. I didn't even see him every day, although I was happy whenever I did. I... I liked my new home. I really did, especially now. It was confusing. There was so many... Wait. I really did, especially now, that my feet felt better and I could run all I liked. But it was confusing. There were so many people here. Mona and Patsy, Granddad and Tyler, Eddie and Fran. Which one did I belong to? I feel asleep, wondering... I fell asleep, wondering. In the morning, Granddad stirred and wiggled up to lick his face. Somebody knocked on the door. Come in, Grand Granddad called sleepily, pushing the, the back with one hand and patting me with it at, at the same time. Excuse me, have you seen to Toby? There you are. Mona came in. I'm so sorry. Did he bar bo bother you? No, no, don't be sorry, Granddad said. I enjoyed the company. Mona scooped me up. Toby, I'm talking you. I'm taking you out, and then you're going to work on something new. 
Mama took me outside to squat. Then she brought me back inside and filled up a bowl. Once I'd eaten, she clipped a leash onto my collar. Come on, Toby. New lessons today. She took me into a room. I hadn't been in before there was a bed in it. And someone was lying in the bed. I perked up as I sniffed something a familiar person. Patsy. Okay, Toby, get on up, Mana said. We know you can do it. She patted the bed and I jumped up beside Patsy. Down, Toby, Mana said. She took a tree out of her pocket. We were doing training. That was very strange. Why were we doing training on a bed? But that treat smelled very interesting. So I did it. I laid down. Good boy, Toby, Mana said. She gave me a me the threat excellent. Good. Now try lie still. Patsy said, Patsy. I'd been so busy with the treat, I hadn't greeted her properly. I jumped up and threw myself across her body. To get to her face, I licked her cheeks and her chin and under her neck to show her how much I'd like her. She pushed me back with one hand. No, Toby, no, she said sternly. I sat down in astonishment. No? Why was she saying no? I was beginning to learn that word along with the other ones. Mana used in training, and I did not like it. It was even worse than stay. Why would you say no to licking? A striped blanket, a a striped blanket was covering Patsy's legs and feet. I pounced on it and grabbed it in my teeth, giving it a good shake. Once Patsy saw saw that I was ready to play. She wouldn't say no anymore. We'd have fun. Toby, no, Mana said. I'd paused with a blanket, still grippling, gripped between my teeth, both of them saying no. What was going on here? Toby, lie still, Mana said, reaching out for me. I dropped the blanket, jumped away from her hands, and leaped off the bed. If Patsy did not want to play with the blanket, I'd find something else. I tore off toward a small room with my bed. Beside the bed was a basket of balls and toys. Good for chewing and also for also for chasing. I grabbed a rubber rubber ring and trotted back to the room where I'd left Mana and Patsy. Now we could play. I jumped up on the bed and showed Patsy the toy. She sighed. Oh boy, this really isn't working out. I dropped the ring on the blanket next to Patsy, but for some strange reason, she did not play with it. She just lay there. Was she just lay there? Was there something wrong with her? Had she been chewing on her feet? <laughs> What's this? Asked a new voice from the doorway. We all looked that way. Fran was standing there. She was frowning again. Training Patsy. Training, Patsy said, sitting up. I picked up the chew toy and offered it to Patsy again. Surely she'd figured it out this time. Fran shook her head. Can't train a beagle not to be a beagle, she said. It was... It... Um, it was not actually that much fun on the bed since Patsy kept ignoring ignoring the toy. I jumped off. Mana tried to grab me, but I dodged her hands and ran past Fran's feet. Then Mana and I had a great game of chase up and down the hallways. I loved playing with Mana, but Mana wasn't there all the time. Patsy was usually around in the day. And often she sat in the chair at the desk and tapped away on a plastic keyboard. That did not even smell interesting. Then she did that. She'd she'd shooed me away. Not now, Toby. I'm working. She'd say, I I soon came to understand that working meant no fun. Luckily, there were other people to see. I visited Granddad a lot, and sometimes Tyler was there too. 
as I trotted up and down the halls, I got to know others. There was one big room with several windows where there were soft couches, where there were soft couches and comfy chairs that got a lot of sunlight. That was a good room to visit. People were usually sitting on the couches watching a black plastic box that blared out sounds and showed moving pictures. I sniffed I sniffed at the at it a time or two. But the pictures did not smell. So I I knew that they were not real. Frankly, I did not understand that why people like to look at that thing so much when they could have been chasing a ball or chewing a stick or petting a dog. But people are funny like that. When I trotted into that room, there was always someone who would pet me or invite me to sit on the couch beside him or her. Some of my friends started keeping treats in their pockets for me, which of course made me even more in interested in saying hello to them. One woman was always, always, was almost always there. She sat in a particular corner of the couch. Of the couch, she didn't say much to anyone. Dorothy, wouldn't you like to come down the hall to the craft session? People would say, stopping to talk to her. Dor Dorothy, isn't isn't it time for your physical therapy? Dorothy. What is I? What if I take you outside in your wheelchair? That's how I figured out that that her name was Dorothy. People use her name with her, just like Mona used my name, with me. When we were doing training, I wondered if those people were trying to train Dorothy. She didn't look as if she enjoyed it much more than I did. They probably needed to feed her better treats. Dorothy didn't usually answer the people. She didn't seem to talk very much, but she would say my name. But she would say my name when I came by and reached down to rub, rub behind my ears. Her fingers were not very strong, but they were gentle and knew just the right spots. I'd sit down beside her and lean on my head into her hand. One day, when I came for my usual visit, Dorothy showed me something in her hand. A ball, a small rubber ball. My tail began to swing back and forth. Balls were chasing for, for chasing. You like that, don't you, little Toby? Dorothy said, very quiet. All right, then. She threw the ball for me. It did not go very far. It hit a wall and rolled a little distance and then bounced weakly off a chair with with wheels. Oh my, said the person in the chair. I chased the ball down, but it was so close that by that I actually ran too far and had to skid to a stop, turn around and grab it in my mouth. Triumphantly, I brought the ball back to Dorothy. Dorothy threw it for me a few times. It wasn't like chasing a ball outside with Mana. Mana could throw the ball so that it went nearly all across the lawn. When Dorothy did the throwing, the ball only went a short distance. Once I had to chase it under the legs of a table. More than once, I dodged around a few people pushing those odd half cages that Granddad liked to use. All of those old half Kate all of those slowed me down, but I got the ball each time and brought it back to Dorothy. Then I licked her shoes to say goodbye and hurried off to see some more of my friends. Patsy was standing in the doorway of the room when I went back into the hallway. Well, look at that, she murmured to herself. She was smiling. After that, Dorothy usually had the little ball with her. When I came by to visit, she got better and better at throwing it, too. It was more fun to chase it when she could put more power behind the throw. 
It still bounced off chairs and walls and zigzagged under tables, though more than once I had to burrow under the couch to get it and return it to Dorothy. Under the couch to get it and return it to Dorothy's hand. I always found it, though. The ball could not escape from me. Ex the ball could not escape me. A few a few weeks after I'd gotten to know Dorothy, I got in to know Dorothy, she surprised me a little. When I came to visit her, she was not sitting in her usual corner of the couch. Instead, she was in one of the chairs with wheels. Patsy happened to n come in the room. Hi, Dorothy, she said cheerfully. Do you want to throw the ball for Toby today? I look. He, I know he looks forward forward to it. Outside, Dorothy said briefly, "I want to throw the ball for to the ball for Toby outside in the grass, where he can really run." I could see surprise in Patsy's face, and the way her body stiffened, just for a moment. Then she smiled. "What a superb idea," she said. "Toby will love that. Come on, Toby." Come, come, Toby. Mana had taught me, come. I knew that it meant I was supposed to stick close to a person who said it, and there would be a reward. So I stayed right at Patsy's heels as she pushed Dorothy in the rolling chair to get her, to get, get her, we headed out onto the lawn. The lawn. I love the lawn. I raced in a quick circle. I figured that was not against the rules of come. Since I went right back to Patsy, I waited for my treat. Instead, Dorothy threw the ball. Excellent. This was nearly as good as a treat. There was so much more room for the ball to go bouncing and, and rolling over the grass. Dorothy had gotten better and better at throwing it, too. I tore after it joyfully. It was more fun when I didn't have to, to dodge around feet and beneath tables. When I could just run and run with all the speed and my paws were capable of, of, capable of what a throw, Patsy said when I snatched the ball in midair and swerved to bring it back to Dorothy in her chair. Good boy, Toby. I knew I was a good boy. Chasing chasing was good. Running was extremely was good. Catching the ball and bringing it back was extremely good. I dropped the ball at Dorothy's feet, wagging so hard that my whole rump that my whole rump wiggled. Dorothy leaned down to pick up the ball and throw it again. So, guys, we're going to end this video right here. And so, guys, I hope you I hope you enjoyed this chapter. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And, guys, I hope you had, have a good day. And I hope you like this chapter. Bye. See you next time.